Okay, we might get started um, today. Today's Toolbox Talk with the QBA, episode number five. Uh, and episode number five, we are talking with our teammates down in Agriculture Victoria, Nikki Jones in particular. Nikki's our Biosecurity Manager of Apri uh, within Agriculture Victoria. So I'm absolutely thrilled that Nikki's on board with us today and is able to give us a bit of a walkthrough and, and an introduction into what to expect if you're planning to travel particularly outside of Queensland um, and especially down into Victoria, um, more so probably to run the almonds this year. So just before we get started, uh, just a little bit of general housekeeping rules. Uh, if you can please keep your microphone muted uh, unless you're speaking, that would be great for our recording for when we upload this to YouTube later on. Um, and a second fact, um, we would like to uh, pay our respects and acknowledge um, the elders of the lands on which we all gather today, uh, elders past, present and emerging emerging and uh, pay tribute to their custodianship of the land in which we all gather on today. Um, I'm coming to you from Ugarapul country in the heart of the scenic rims and the foothill of the Great Dividing Range in southeast Queensland. Um, so I'll get straight into it. Uh, Nikki, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today for this toolbox talk. I know we've only got one person uh, in with us at the moment, but usually within the first five minutes, we get um, a, a few more of people trickling through. So Nikki, I might hand over to you and um, we'll get started with um, what to expect if we're traveling to Victoria. No worries. Thanks, Joe. Um, so, excuse me, everyone. I'm in very casual dress today, casual dress Friday. There's hardly anyone in the office. And I've very last minute pulled together a bit of a PowerPoint presentation. There's probably too many words on there, but it's more for me to take me through what I'm, uh, what I wanted to share with you all. So I'm just going to share my screen. Give me one second and do this. There, can you, oh, can you see that, Joe? Yeah, that looks oh, good. Oh, no way. I'm We've sharing the wrong stream. Mode. <laughs> I'm sharing <laughs> the okay. wrong screen. How do I? Uh, share that screen. There, that look That better. looks great, Nikki. I'll leave that all over to you. Thank you. Well, I'll put you on the screen. There we go. All right. Um, so, uh, I'm calling this presentation unofficially everything you need to know to bring hives from Queensland to Vic for almond pollination, the 2023 edition, because some of you I know came down um, last year and will be, and it's, things are a little bit different. Um, let me get here, there we go. Um, so two parts to what I'm gonna talk about today. One is just a general understanding of the requirements and expectations. Um, and a bit of the thinking behind them. Um, and number two, I'm hopefully going to try and take you to it through a nice step by step of everything you need to do to get your permit sorted to come down here and participate in um, pollination in Victoria. So first up, this time last year, Victoria, I suppose, basically, we didn't have any evidence to say whether or not we had viral mite here and a lot has changed in 12 months. Here's a big picture of Victoria that I've covered blue. And that's to kind of represent that Victoria has undertaken that World Animal Health Organization level surveillance that the New South Wales blue zone did in order to sort of demonstrate that we also um, haven't had a detection or haven't got a varroa mite present here. It's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, so this year, last year, we had a separate control area order just for the Sun Ranger in the very top um, part of the state there and everyone that came to Armands last year had to have a permit. So Victorians, Queenslanders, everyone had to have a permit to come in. This year that's been removed for our Victorian beekeepers. Um, in Victoria, the biosecurity code of practice is legislated here. So Victorian beekeepers are already operating under the code, best practice biosecurity here. So what we have now is just the statewide control area order and anyone coming into the state from any other state requires a permit. And the permit conditions for those are the same. So whether you're coming from the New South Wales Blue Zone, Queensland or South Australia, you're all getting an interstate um, permit and they're exactly the same. Um, so let's, I'll go through all of the kind of expectations. First one yep. is really basic. Um, hives that you're bringing into Vic can't have spent any time since January 1st, 2021 in one of these red or purple zones. And when you're driving down here, please don't drive your truck through one, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's the expectation from Queensland as well, Nikki. So that's yeah. great. 
That one's pretty standard nationally at the moment. So that one yeah. should be across. So I'm assuming people that are thinking about coming down, they're already satisfying this if they're thinking about coming. Um, the second one, this is an uh, interesting one. I haven't worded it probably very well here. It looks a bit aggressive. Whatever you bring in, take them back. But the permits basically for the interstaters, the hives that are coming in, what Victoria is asking, and we're doing this for our own Victorian beekeepers that are coming and going too. And if you're familiar with the code and you're familiar with the barrier system, you'll be all mm -hmm. over this. But what we're asking is hives that are coming into Victoria, we want you to identify or manage those hives as a distinct subunit or a load or a barrier system. Yep. Um, it's not prescriptive how you do this. So what I'd recommend is that you replicate what you're doing at home. It doesn't make any sense otherwise. But um, uh, you need to make sure your hives coming in are branded and they're easily identifiable. So if, if I, as an inspector, walk out into the field, I should be able to go, yep, there's Joe Martin's hives. Look at them. Mm -hmm. They've all got a brand on them. They align yep. with their permit. And I've got the piece of paper in my hand, the permit. So there's 140 hives. I can see 140 hives. It all makes sense. Um, the managing in a load and having them marked in the field. It's all about just think about me and mm -hmm. making it easy for me to see in the field what these hives are, who they are. I need to rapidly be able to ascertain whose they are basically and if they've got a permit. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. So, Joe, ask questions here if you think people are going to yes. be confused by this because this is the most confusing part about our permit system is how you're identifying this load. So what I've got coming in at the moment, I've got some beekeepers that are applying for one permit for 975 hives. Yes, yep. And I've got other beekeepers that are applying for six permits for exactly 144 hives each because 144 hives is what fits on their truck. Truck. And they day to day are using a barrier system and running those loads separately. So there's pros and cons to this. We don't prescribe how you do it. You just need to tell us what you're bringing in. Um, and what you want to do is make sure that that load that you're bringing in, your record keeping behind that aligns with that load. So if you're already running a barrier system, I recommend applying for the multiple permit. Mm -hmm. The disadvantage of that is when we get to the mite check records, you will be doing higher mite testing in order to get in. Yes. But the advantage of it is that if you can demonstrate that they are distinct loads and something happens while you're in Victoria, for example, there's even if there's a detection back in Queensland and one of your loads becomes caught up as a close contact or whatever, if you've got these eight separate permits and you've got eight barrier systems and things like that, you might only have one load that's caught up in that and all that work you've put in really pays off all of a sudden because you've only got 140 hives that are caught up back in Victoria getting surveillance and sticking out. Instead of the entire, yes. Instead of the yes. entire load. And you've got seven that are still free to move. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense to do that if you're not already doing something like mm -hmm. that in your system. If you if you run, if you're only bringing 400 hives down, those 400 hives for the last 12 months have all been within 15, 20 Ks of each other anyway. You mix things, you take brood across, you swap supers. There's no point. You might as well just get one permit for 400 hives. That's your load. And um, the advantage of that is the testing is slightly less to come in just because of the way that epidemiologic, epidemiologic um, stats work. Yes. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's the most difficult thing people are having trouble understanding. Hopefully it'll make more sense and you'll be able to make a decision on what you want to do there as we go through. But um, the other thing, yeah, the expectation is that what you say on your permit is what comes in. And that also leaves again. So while you're in Victoria, the expectation is that you're not making splits, you're not buying 30 nukes and introducing them to the load, you're not selling off half your bees while you're here. And mm -hmm. I'm hoping that applies to at least 90% of people coming in from Queensland. Obviously, I can't stop you selling your abs if you come down and want to do something like that. But it just is a trigger so that um, if you are going to do something like that, you need to contact us, basically. Of course. So if you think about your truck or your load of bees and you've got your piece of paper that's your permit and if you're physically standing there and something doesn't match like I've sold 30 hives to this guy or last minute the broker asked me to move 200 of these to a different location which now doesn't match my piece of paper it is a trigger for you to get in contact with us and let us know absolutely okay and, and um, contacting the department is as easy as sending the the APRI team an email or is there a dedicated phone number or something like that that our people should be aware of yeah, so the best way for anything permit related is to email honeybee.permits yeah. at agriculture.vic. 
permit.gov.au. So I would, if right. you're coming down and you, you in, when you go through your permit process, you'll become familiar with that email address and hopefully save it in your inbox. And um, how and our permits officer on the other end of that will be the best um, contact if you need to do anything like that. The other thing to note is the permit only lasts three months. So you've got to come into um, Victoria and leave again within three months. If you end up mm -hmm. staying longer than that, that's okay. You just need to notify us. And actually it means under our legislation that you have to register as a Victorian beekeeper is what it means if you stay longer than three months. So yeah, sure thing. So Nikki, are there provisions in that case? Um, uh, just a scenario sake, um, you know, Bob Jones, our beekeeper is, is taking down three truckloads of bees, the equivalent of let's say 280 hives on the back of each truck. Um, now he's migrating down there and, and he's made a, a decision to actually start working bees um, start working bees into the um, Victorian spring and summer months. He's found some some resources down there. So is that is that an issue there at all? Um, that's something that they need to consciously be aware of as they're applying for that permit? Is that what I'm feeling the general vibe of at the moment? Is there flexibility with a permitting system to make provisions for beekeepers to do that at the moment? Yeah, so what you'd need to do is apply and get a permit variation, I suppose. Um, yep. Uh, once you you've got that three months actually you can log as many movements as you want in that three months it doesn't mean that you just come to your almond orchard and leave so if you're still going to fall within that three months your permit's still perfectly valid you can go other places in victoria as long as you're letting us know which mm -hmm. i'll show you how to do that in a minute yep. um and leave but if you're going to go longer than the three months you do actually have to register as a victorian beekeeper then and then you're subject to all of our um so then your permit becomes um completely different you, you become a victorian beekeeper yeah Sure thing. That's probably very rare that that would actually occur. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking probably two of the the more consistent um, approaches that we'll probably see is beekeepers from Queensland immediately leaving Queensland to work hives uh, in the almond orchards in Victoria and then very quickly repatriating those hives back to Queensland. The other alternative that I see is that there is some appetite with beekeepers wanting to minimise some of their loads at the moment um, because we are having staffing and resourcing issues within our sector. So <clears throat> I do see that there's probably potential appetite that some beekeepers might be having conversations at the moment about selling loads of bees. So I suppose it's really important that if, if they're going along those lines to start having a conversation with the team at Agriculture Victoria now so that they can make sure that they have got a complete understanding of exactly what requirements need to be fulfilled for what circumstances. Would yeah. I be along the right lines? Yeah, definitely. Because what would happen is you'd still have your permit to come in and then if you were going to sell, and so the permit is set up very much for the first scenario that you said, come in, leave, great. Yep. Get the permit, it works. If you're coming in and going to sell or anything like that, what we need to do is then transfer those requirements for those hives onto the new owner and we need to put in some paperwork to for traceability about the sale, similar to when you sell a car or a trailer, you know, and you fill out that paperwork. There's a bunch of yes. paperwork to do basically. So yeah, yeah. that's what it's all about. So yeah, if you're planning to do something like that, definitely get in contact with us early and we can help you out. Um, but the permit is very much set up for Scenario one, come, go. Scenario one, come and yeah. go. That's right. <laughs> come clean, go clean. That's what we like. Yeah. Excellent. So testing requirements. So this is the this is the tricky one here that um, I know that we've had a few stumbling blocks in Queensland and, and guys really trying to get their head across exactly how they treat this. And this is that scenario that it relates back to. If you're, you know, moving down a, a volume of, you know, 800 hives, then exactly, you know, what are those numbers that you need to be testing, even though you might treat them as individual loads within your current barrier systems, um, you know, what do you need to be washing within those loads, I suppose. So it's so a little bit of a rabbit warren that we tend to go down, but um, I'm going to give you the floor to to, to walk us through uh, a typical scenario on what we might expect to uh, need to meet as far as obligations for testing are concerned. Yeah, so we've had a few criticisms of the VIC system because it does align to what you're applying for on your permit. So like I said before, you can put 800 hives on your permit, or you can put 144, and it's going to differentiate your test, it's going to change your testing. Um, so it's not perfect, but like I explained before, there's the pros and cons there. Like um, you can build in a bit more business resilience for yourself if you're doing breaking it down into those smaller loads, take a few more risks with the bigger one and do the less testing, I suppose. But basically, whatever you're applying for on your permit, if it's 144 hives or it's 800 hives, um, your alcohol washing 
test that what you've got to demonstrate or give to us um, relates to that permit number. So for 64 hives or less, wash all of them and you'll recognise these numbers from the old New South Wales Blue, Blue Zone um, requirement. Um, anything up to 640, you're testing 64, and for more than 640, you're testing 10%. And it is alcohol washes for Queenslanders coming in yes. or anyone coming in. Um, the other part to remember here and the expectation when you come to Vic, it'll be on your permit, is we want you to write on the lid of the ones that you've tested. Right. So you can see that example there. That's one from last year from a Victorian beekeeper. So he's on a sugar shake. So you guys will be the same, just the date, alcohol wash. And so when I walk through the apiary in the field, I can go along and count and see that there's been testing done. I want to be able to visibly see that there's been testing done on the hives. Easy, yeah. And I think that's 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 a pretty much of a no-brainer there. We don't necessarily um, want to disturb hives that have already been tested. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That means, um, and yeah, and the ones the ones that. I mean, the, the better you can make this look in the field, the less likely you are to be targeted and have your hives opened for things like that. If I can see that you've got all your permit things down pat, everything's clearly labelled, marked, I can see that you've done your testing, you know, you're completely low risk and, um, yeah, we're not going to have as many staff out in the field this year in Victoria as we did last year. Last year, I know everyone's hives got pretty well, um, they all got open, well, not all got open, but every beekeeper's hives got open, basically. I haven't got as yeah. many staff out there this year. It's more of a targeted operation this year, but we'll definitely okay. be visiting all interstaters to check that they definitely have a permit. And meet their requirements. Yeah, no worries. Um, so the next requirements, I'm, I'm still on the giving you the picture of what you're in for here if you're coming. Yes. So keep this all in mind if you're deciding to come. These are all the things you're going to have to do. The last one is um, all hives that are coming into... Victoria we're maintaining traceability on and the way that we're doing that in New South Wales they've got their app which I think is probably I haven't used it but I think it's probably a bit nicer than our system but anyway we've got BMAC which was predominantly mm -hmm. built for hobby beekeepers originally we've made some amendments and got it happening so that we can use it because it has the functionality that we need um, so that we can use it to maintain traceability on all the oh, we've lost your headset <laughs> So while Nikki's just going through that, um, I might just further add to that conversation. Um, so effectively, when we're when we're coming up and when we're talking and referring to any type of alcohol washing uh, situation, we need to make sure that we're inputting all of our data back into the B123 app. So um, the, the B123 app, the report, the Viromite reporting and surveillance tool itself in Queensland, once you're actually entering your data into that portal, the evidence that you're providing with regards to your Viromite um, alcohol washing, your drone uncapping, anything along those lines, those are really, really important uh, records that you're going to need to provide as evidence of your testing when you get to this point in time. So, Nikki, I've just saved you there. We might just test your audio again. I, can you hear me yeah, again? You're looking perfect. Sorry. That sounds great. That I'm in a new great. office and I haven't right quite got the half an hour mark too, so. <laughs> Yeah, I knew that would happen. Um, so when you get your permit, you'll be basically sent a set of instructions about how to log into our BMAC platform. Down the bottom there, you can see the, are you an interstate beekeeper? Do you have a movement permit to enter Victoria? You click on that and basically ours is called BMAX. I call the interstate one B-mini. It's not too confusing mm -hmm. in there. There's only a couple of functions that you can do and basically it's log a movement. And so the expectation is that you'll log um, your movement into Victoria mm -hmm. within 48 hours of it happening. You'll say, oh, I've moved. So last year, I think we tried to make people say what date they were moving. And it was really complicated because people yes. said, I don't know. Yes. So this year, it's I think you still say roughly what date. But the um, you, you log into this. When you move, you say, I have moved. If you move within Victoria, if you're coming into an overwintering site before you go into the orchard or if you get here and the broker says, actually, I really need you to you know, go over take, there. Yeah. Go over there. Yep. Um, you just log in here and you, um, it's set up as a beekeeper diary. So you add a diary entry and you hit um, movement from location to location save. So it's really quick once you've got the um, set up. So um, I just wanted to mention all of those things at the beginning um, uh, so that people understand. I know it is a, quite a lot of paperwork and paperwork is overwhelming. My hot tip is, 
find like a niece or a nephew or someone great that you can train <laughs> yes. up for the season yes. to be yes. your um or, yeah. or beekeeper wives, be warned. Beekeeper this wives, is usually <laughs> from Queens, Queensland, we yeah. usually see it's the better half of the beekeeping operation that is the Brains Trust, um, and they're usually getting in contact with me, and 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 we're we're sifting through this data requirement. I, I keep on saying to people, this is just like COVID again, but on steroids. We're not worried about the humans anymore. Um, it is record keeping and reporting, and, and being very consistent with all of those requirements. And I'm I'm quite confident if if you if you're on top of it it shouldn't be too consuming and overwhelming, should I say. So, Yeah. So this is just an example. This is my BMAX account. Yours will have slightly less blue buttons down the bottom here, but this one called Add Diary Entry is the one I'm talking about. You click on okay. that and you log a movement. Um, so that's sort of what you're in for broadly. Broadly speaking, what we're trying to do is allow business continuity, allow movement, allow people to make money, come to almonds, et cetera. But in order to do that, people like myself have to demonstrate that we're addressing all the risks. Yes. And the, the way that we do that is we, um, we make sure that we've got high level of mite testing and checking prior to movements and, we, and a thing called traceability, which is basically just trying to understand where people are at any one time so that if something does happen, we can um, do it. So that's all the... Um, the sort of background, I suppose, and now we'll go a bit through step by step what we need to do to make Fantastic. it happen. Fantastic. So basically, you need to apply for a permit online. That's the link there. We can, I will put all these links in the chat for you, maybe. Anyway, yes. Oh, can I? Yep. Um, oh, I can't. Hang on, go back. Um, it's online at the Agriculture Victoria website. You can do that anytime from now, if you know, if you've got your contract sorted, ready to go, you know where you're going. I had someone call me today, Anne, I believe, um, who's ready to go. So you can jump on there and start filling that in now. It's not an automated system, like mm -hmm. the New South Wales movement one. There is a physical human at the other end of it that's going to review it all. More than likely, you'll get a phone call. A lot of, you know, when we set yes. it up, they, they've done yes. people, IT people say, oh, it just can be online. I said, I guarantee well, there'll be a phone call associated Absolutely. with everyone. And there is. <laughs> but um, so there is a human on the other end of it um, who will call you if you've done anything wrong or anything like that, help step you through it. Um, on the website, this, this is the green button you're looking for at the bottom there. It's the very first one. There's a whole mm -hmm. bunch of green buttons with all the different permits. And you guys are the first one. Interstate registered beekeeper permit to move hives into Victoria. So you click on that and that'll get you started. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to tick a bunch of declarations there. Like I have not been in the red or purple zone. Um, uh, and yeah, I'll do my alcohol washes and all that. And it asks for your from address to address all that. Um, then you need to get your documents in order. So what it will ask for is a copy of either your Bolt training. The Queensland is familiar with the bolt training, Joe. Yes, most definitely. All of our beekeepers should be on top of their bolt training. It's not a, a mandated requirement here in Queensland, but it is a best practice requirement. So um, definitely I've got some messaging that will be going out around bolt training in the next week, just to highlight that if you haven't done it, it's probably time to revisit it and get your certificate sorted out. Cool. So yeah, so on our permits, there's an expectation that you've done some level of biosecurity education. The two things that we accept is um the TOCAL certificate, which is the New South Wales, that some of your Queensland beekeepers would have done, their, their Varroa mite course that they've got. Yes. Or that that Plan Health Australia Biosecurity Online Beekeeper Training. So you have to have done one of those and have your certificate submit to the permit officer. So you can also do that now when you put it in. There's no time limit on that. Um, one month prior to moving, you do still need your business as usual health certificate. So mm -hmm. people that have been to um, almonds before, yes, almonds before. Normally, you would have just got this one piece of paper and down you come. That bit of paper you still need. This permit system is addressing all the risks associated with varroa. Varroa, yeah. That bit of paper still exists. It addresses your AFB risk basically. So you need your honey culture test. You give it to Patricia Swift or or one of the APR officers. Hamish Lamb. Hamish yes. Lamb, and they'll sign off on that for you. So you'll need um, that bit of paper as well. You should do that one month. Uh, you can do it up to one month prior to coming. Um, and then two weeks prior, so you can apply for your permit 
earlier because mm -hmm. obviously you're going to have to submit those might check records and the might checks yes. have to be done two weeks prior to movement but i advise you to get your paperwork in first and you'll get everything sorted and it will just say pending that you provide these records two weeks before so you know at the last minute you've only got one thing left to do um so those ones you won't be able to do to two weeks prior we accept them in any format that you're keeping them in. So if you've got mm -hmm. them on the B123 app and you can print them out, send them like that. If you've got them in a diary or on an Excel spreadsheet, however you've got them, you just need to be able to give them to Apply our permits them. officer. So you okay. can either attach them on that online system or you can email them to Honeybee Permits. Okay. Officer I might after. just ask there as well, Nikki, is is mm -hmm. there a requirement for um, regular and consistent testing, if that makes sense? So are you also looking for uh, alcohol washes that have been completed 16 weeks prior to your almond washes, for example, sake? So if you're, if you're leaving within that two-week period or are you looking for those? Um, because that's that's something that it's it's been a funny question that we haven't really been able to get across, I suppose. But, you know, we are expecting people to be meeting those thresholds. You know, every 16 weeks you're washing your bees. Um, for the purposes of these Queensland permits, the only thing you'll be asked to demonstrate is that two weeks prior one. You okay. won't have to give evidence of um, earlier. We did have some other permits um, for new people that were stuck in New South Wales for a long time where we were accepting the prior ones. Past but, records. Yeah, the reason why it is for two weeks prior is because it means that you can come in for the three months and none of your repeated surveillance falls in that time. Does that sure. make sense? Yes. Um, yes. So it is only the two weeks prior. So by all means, you can show us all the rest of your records. I hope you're doing them in Queensland, but that's Queensland's job to collect Yes, you better that. be doing them, Queensland. <laughs> you better um, be I'm doing them. Each state should be collecting all that stuff. And for our purposes, we're just interested in that you've done one prior to the movement, I suppose. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. Yep. And is there just furthermore to that, is there a condition then um, at that the the other end of that 16 week period that you're, sub you're conducting another alcohol wash and providing that data back to BMAX? Not on ours. No. It's just okay. the one on entry. Come, go home. And tell Queensland yes. you might check. So you go, go home. straight back to Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> I know it doesn't sound very nice, does it? It's just no, it doesn't. To keep it as simple as possible yeah. because we understand that people are likely have obligations in their own state around that stuff. So it doesn't duplicate anything like that. It's just very basic. Do your test, come in, go home again, keep doing your tests up there. Awesome. Yeah. The um, old there April, is it, August and November. They're the might months oh, you need to remember. So if, you, if you're if you hitting your markers with that, you should be fine. You should be meeting all of these requirements and expectations on your permits. Yeah, the only requirement or expectation on there is if at any time you become aware that you're a close contact or something like that, then you let us know. Or of obviously course. if you go home and you find something that you contact us, that's I think, <laughs> the only permit condition related to that. Um, so step three. Two weeks prior, you want to get out in the field and do your alcohol wash. This is, um, that was me doing alcohol. Well, that's not me, but that's a, a New Zealand beekeeper I met called Richard because I went to New Zealand recently and practiced alcohol washing over there when you actually got to find something in the yes uh, in the bottom of the liquid. Um, so, yeah, sorry. So that's your field work component. You're going to have to get out there um, two weeks prior. Hopefully you guys will have less trouble with that than South Australia being in the warmer climates up there because I know yeah. it's difficult two weeks prior <laughs> to August so I do understand that um, and if you're having difficulty the main thing is that you get it done I suppose if it's two weeks and one day just let us know it's probably going to be okay you know okay. um, but yeah we ask that that's done and or in that scenario then we might choose well, what other records have you got you know um, for prior of but course. Yeah. Um, then step four, you should get your paperwork. Um, hooray, I've written, look at me go. Um, so your permit will look something like this without all the yellow stuff. It'll have all of your details mm -hmm. on there and a couple of pages of condition. Um, once you receive that, my hot tip is to print out a few copies because what you want to do is on each of your loads that you're bringing down, you want to have a copy of that piece of paper with the load. Sure. Um, and at that point, when you receive your paperwork, you'll also be given those details about how to set up your BMAX account. I'm not sure. They might be issuing the permits conditionally prior to that two weeks saying, just make sure you send those mic checks. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I, I 
Karen's not on today and I wasn't able to ask her how she's doing that, but um, uh, yeah, get your, this is the piece of paper you need, set up your BMAC account and then you're ready to move. So the loads have to be secured and covered. Mm -hmm. The VIC requirements don't specify any particular mesh size. It, the wording is um, inaccessible to bees or prevents entry and escape of bees. Um, so a copy of your permit must travel with the livestock and and then you go on to BMAC and log the movement two days okay. post. Um, that's basically the rundown. Did I confuse everyone more? Have I given you more confidence in order to get a permit? I think I said, well, I, I, I'll say that um, you've definitely given me more confidence, but, you know, people ask me what I do for a job and I say I look after 160,000 honeybee hives in Queensland and the welfare of nearly 10,000 beekeepers. So, um, yeah, so I'm definitely across that. But, um, look, I want to open the floor up. We've got a few um, people here in with us. I've got Rick and Craig and Anne. Um, feel free to un unmute, um, relieve yourselves of your audio restrictions and and um, throw out any questions that you've got. I think just in the meantime, um, what I might grab from Nikki um, early next week is a copy of some of the links, uh, useful links for our beekeepers. Um, and we'll actually go about, I'll pop them up on the QBA's Varroa Mite portal so that they're in a nice, easy to find location for you so that you've got them to hand. Um, has anyone got any question with regards to uh, moving down? I know that we had a few late entries that arrived um, with the toolbox you know, particularly with regards to alcohol washing or anything like that. The floor is yours. Thanks, Nikki. I've, I've just put in the chat there the link to the actual permits page. Awesome. And that's the email address you can contact with any questions or fantastic thing like that. Yeah, so I think I think moving forward, um, you know, we've definitely got some interest in the QBA to to probably start covering a few more of these regular check ins um, just with the teams, Ag Victoria, New South Wales, DPI and Biosecurity Queensland, um, just to make sure that we're really, really across everything that's moving along. But I, I do expect, you know, we've we've had 12 months um, to, to work through and, and learn some lessons, I suppose, from the last migration to Armand. So, um, you know, everyone is invested in making sure that this is a, a very safe operation to to travel down to Victoria and, and, and get yourself home again. Um, I just would err anyone on the side of caution. You need to just make sure that you're across the, the three different jurisdictional requirements. So if you're leaving from Queensland, you know, you do have some requirements that you need to fulfil uh, in Queensland and there are some conditions on your departure. So if you do happen to leave Queensland, on the premises that you're going into Victoria underneath an approved permit system and returning back straight back to Queensland, you won't be required to complete a Queensland permit at all. We're just seeing that as, as, as one simple migration to and from. Now, we are starting to have some conversations with the jurisdictions. Um, some of my concerns in particular is having a look at approved travel routes again, because obviously we don't want you going anywhere near Narrabri. Uh, so, of course, as soon as you get to Moree, you turn and head <laughs> head west. Um, we want you all going west to um, make sure that you, you're well and truly past um, that, that red zone pop-up that we've got at Narrabri. Um, but, you know, we're, we're having conversations at the moment to get across any type of situation that potentially can occur on the road. So um, equipment failure is number one. So if we see any truck breakdowns or anything like that, you know, we're having those conversations at the moment to make sure that we've got a jurisdictional understanding on what we consider is a safe amount of time, for example, sake, if, you, if your truck is parked up for, you know, 24, 48 hours, um, we're obviously looking at your best fatigue management as well, because you're all truck drivers at the end of the day. So making sure that your health and welfare um, is absolutely paramount because your bees are no damn good without you. So, um, you know, there's all of those checkoffs. So there are going to be regular conversations being had between, you know, definitely the state jurisdictions and the industry state uh, bodies, as well as ARBIC, I expect in, in the next week or two. But, you know, coming and given that we're on the 30th of June today, um, if, if you're about to sign a contract for almonds, you need to start doing your homework now, um, you know, again, as I've often said in toolboxes, if you've been meeting your testing requirements and those thresholds for testing every 16 weeks, 
you've already got a large component of your work done. So that that's a huge win for you. Um, you know, and understanding that Ag Victoria guys, they're a human that's assessing these permits, just like Biosecurity Queensland. Um, you know, we've got humans assessing those permits. It's not just a tick and flick and here's your piece of paper. Um, there are people looking through that. So obviously any other supporting information that you can give to help satisfy someone's, uh, you know, interest and in understanding exactly how you've been keeping your bees uh, and, and meeting your biosecurity obligations, that's going to be helpful for you um, in securing permits so there there is some work around room sometimes so um i definitely go to that nikki is there anything else particularly that you want to highlight with us um, um before we flick through no. uh i was just going to say on the truck breakdown one of that i remember there being a lot of anxiety around that last year because last year victoria was not allowing new south wales hives in but this yes. year we are allowing blue zone new south wales hives in so it's really not a big deal for us this year, if you stopped unexpectedly in the blue zone of New South Wales, it's not going to impact you getting to Victoria because there's other blue zone Victoria, uh, New South Wales hives that are coming anyway. That are going year. to be in there, it's, yes. It's not like a, um, yeah, it's not a deal breaker in any way. For Vic that won't impact you coming into, nice to note, but um, that won't yeah. impact anyone this year. So there's a lot less anxiety around that stuff. Um, the only other one is uh, that, um, there's no mandate from us, from Agriculture Victoria, with regards to the placement of hives in the orchards, according to last year, I think they put a lot of the Queensland hives yes, together. Yes, bubbled, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I believe the from my discussions with the brokers, they're attempting to do that again with all the different states. I'm not sure how successful it will be, uh, um, uh, but I know that, yeah, the brokers and that are looking into that again. So hopefully that... Um, is another good thing that uh, beekeepers, brokers and orchardists can work together to um, to make that because I know people feel a lot more comfortable when they're... Um, oh, entirely. You know? Yeah, yeah, sure. That's definitely... No, that's a very, very good mark. Well, um, Nikki, I, I want to express my sincere thanks to you um, and the team. Brett, hi, everyone, because um, it, it really is very helpful. Um, you know, I, I have a strong motto about preparation uh, and planning and making sure that everything's going to go tickety-boo. Um, you know, we want a Mickey Mouse-style exercise where we can go clean, enter clean and return home clean um, and that's that's our number one priority is is making sure that we're protecting the interests of everyone so nikki i will um thank you very much for that yes. i might just park you just for a quick moment because mm -hmm. i'm going to translate now over into the queensland varroa mite surveillance numbers now these numbers are um, calculated from last friday at the moment I'm, I'm working on getting some new numbers for today but hopefully our bq staff are still madly and furiously working to be able to populate that information for me. Uh, now, hopefully, if everyone can see that. So this is actually what we're looking at as far as B123 submissions in Queensland. Uh, so this is relative of the uh, initial date itself. Um, 853 reports have been received uh, and those surveys have been completed since about the 8th of July last year. Now, our total hives checked at this point in time is 11,841. Um, of that, there's about 6,000 hives that have been tested since the 1st of April. So um, my thanks to everyone out there. You're only a third of the way there. So please continue to keep testing your bees and inputting that data into B123. Very, very, very important. Um, the other item that I would like to um, you know, highlight to you, I don't tell, need to tell you is how to keep your bees, but utilise, if, if we're getting some beautiful temperatures out there, utilise that time now because we're going to very, very quickly transfer forward into July and potentially August. So uh, if you can seize a couple of days there and go out and test those loads and, and you should all be across the testing requirements now for testing larger commercial sizes of bees. Um, of course, if you've got less than 64 we're asking you to test every single hive in your apiary um, total hives tested and underneath the reporting system is 62,636 hives um, and to date we've had 355 submissions from commercial beekeepers so um, well done congratulations but uh, we're not there yet 
as I said, we were a third of the way to go. So um, a couple of things moving forward uh, in the next week or so that we need to be across um, is making sure that you're staying on top of any of that content that's being published from New South Wales DPI. We do plan to have a toolbox session with Chris Anderson or one of the team from the response uh, to brief us on what to expect travelling through New South Wales. Uh, the other issue is as well, a few beekeepers have been in contact and uh, showing interest in running down to Victoria, but then actually coming back into New South Wales to work bees on canola and things like that. So um, if, if you're planning to do that, please make sure that you dial in for the next QBA toolbox talk and we'll be trying to cover off that element of work that needs to be um, covered so that everyone again is well prepared to go down. Um, finally, um, I might just quickly wrap up. This is the first time I've spoken to everyone since conference. I did sleep for a full day. I got a full day sleep, which was really good. Um, but Steph and I have very quickly um, moved and migrated into post-conference work. So there is a very, very large body of work, but I'd like to recognise the the efforts of, uh, of our entire executive. Um, congratulations congratulate Lisa Sams and congratulate Rick Jensen on their appointment to the QBA executive. Um, I'm sure that they will be great new additions to our executive team um, and they will get in the hot and heavy conversations and robust conversations that we're all familiar with. Uh, moving forward, if you haven't already done so, if uh, you've received an email with regards to helping out with ECA, our ECA subcommittee are busy, busy, busy at the moment planning for another great event, but they're also looking for volunteers at the moment. So if you haven't heard from someone, please send us an email at info at qbabs.org.au and I will be more than happy to show your information over to Chris and Nikki and they will put you on the roster and work with you on the most appropriate days. Uh, apart from that, we're tracking quite nicely. Um, thanks to our annual sponsors as well. Our webpage is getting another little bit of a facelift in the next week or so at the moment. So definitely go on by and visit qbabs.org.au to see what changes have been made there. Uh, but apart from that, um, I will bid you adieu for this Friday afternoon unless anyone else has got any questions. I'm going to open the floor again one last time to Rick, Craig or Anne. And I don't have anyone unmuting. So um, I'll wrap that today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nikki, so, so much. Um, I appreciate the effort, particularly at this time on a Friday afternoon. Um, go and look for a warm or cold beverage of your choice. Uh, please enjoy. Uh, but for now, we'll see you in a fortnight's time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Joe. Bye.